Hello, we're here in Waterford again at the Open Minds Conference 2017 with uh, Tom Ryan, who came to speak to us about personal sovereignty. Um, Tom, would you like to tell us some more um, about this particular subject and of your opinion of this conference, uh, these these two running days in Waterford, please? Okay, well, let's take it in reverse. The conference was absolutely fantastic and fabulous people like Ben, Gar ben Gilroy and Gerard Coleman and um, Ian were absolutely out of this world and Hilary Connor and the rest of them. So the conference was an outstanding success. I hope they do it again, maybe throughout the country, in the UK, in Scotland and some other places. With regard to personal sovereignty, it's a very personal thing. You see, we were all born sovereign. We were all born what we call unalienable rights, as they speak in the American Declaration of Independence. Uh, they speak somewhat like that also in the uh, 1916 Declaration uh, in, uh, for the Revolution in Dublin. Um, we're born with those rights, but uh, in a society we surrender a lot of those rights to become, if you like, citizens. A citizen is very much a French word, actually. And um, a citizen is a person who has given up some of those rights. That's fine, providing they give them up to an authority that they create, that in turn will return to them uh, protection and uh, a lot of other benefits. The problem is they don't return the benefits. In Ireland in particular, the government and the successive governments have sold out the country to international bankers and we are now numbered with 42% of all European bankers' debt in Ireland. That's 42% of all European bankers' debt. Because um, the European banks that finance through the Irish banks and all of that, it, it just snowballed on. So we're carrying 42% of that. So we're over 100% of GDP in debt. Now, the government did that without any reference back to the people. And as a result of that, the government have lost their social contract with the people. In other words, from that moment onward, the government are totally, utterly illegitimate. But that's a good thing. Because it's important that the people recognize that they must govern themselves. And the first thing they must do is no harm to themselves and no harm to anybody else. To live in harmony with yourself and with nature and with everything around you and to recognize uh, yourself as a sovereign, to recognize everybody else with their sovereign rights and they have a right to opinions that differ from yours without having to fight about them. Now the big problem in that is beliefs. Because one man's beliefs are an, an anatomy to another man and uh, belief systems are pretty horrific because uh, beliefs lead people to killing each other. Beliefs lead people to thinking that we're different from other people. So different from other people that they're not valid as people anymore and it's okay to go out and kill them. One man's beliefs says that you are a freedom fighter and the guy at the other side that just says you're a terrorist. And the only difference between the two is beliefs. So beliefs must be replaced by a state of inner knowing. And the best way to connect with a state of inner knowing is through connecting with the alpha brainwave patterns, which is a very simple thing to do. You see, we're mostly operating in what we call beta brainwave patterns. And that's the brainwave patterns for survival, if you like. But the problem with that beta brainwave patterns is they use a lot of energy, and they cause a lot of stress, and in turn stress causes a lot of disease, and it causes the demise of our body, or death, uh, way before its time. Whereas we learn to work with alpha brainwave patterns, which a lot of meditative practices do very successfully, we can then learn to connect with more mind. Like, a lot of scientists today still think our mind is a, an offshoot of a whole lot of neurons working in the brain. That's absolute rubbish. The brain is a processor a receiver, a transmitter, a communicator. That's all the brain is. The brain doesn't do very much thinking, a little bit. Basic stuff. But the creative part is mind, and mind is universal, and really there's only one mind. People say we're all connected with each other. Yes, we are, because there is only one mind. And that mind is universal, and the more we connect with it, the more genius comes through us. Genius is simply connecting with more mind. The great people like Nikola Tesla and people like that, they had connection with more mind. Now, academic education 
is useful in the fact that if Nikola Tesla wasn't educated in his electronics and uh, engineering and things like that, he wouldn't have been able to interpret the information that was flowing in from universal consciousness. But because of his training, he was able to connect with that information. And he was able to interpret that information and he was able to turn it into absolutely amazing creations and inventions. So we can't completely discount academic education because it can be very useful in certain areas. Unfortunately, a lot of it is used for learning absolute rubbish that's it's good for nothing and nothing can be interpreted from it. But in general, if a person goes in a good kind of technical type education, then they can be in a place where they can download an awful lot of additional stuff to bring out the genius within and they can be all Nikola Teslas if you like. So when we're talking about personal sovereignty, we're not just talking about my, my rights are better than his rights or anything like that. That's not personal sovereignty, that's conflict. And conflict comes from beliefs and believing that you're superior to somebody else, or that uh, they're not as good as you or you're better than them or that they're better than you. It's beliefs again. And we've got to bypass those beliefs. And we can simply, as we go to bed at night, just imagine binning those beliefs, putting them away bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. When we wake up in the morning, we can say to ourselves, no, I can take back those beliefs or I can leave them there all day. And if I leave them there all day, I'm still intact, I'm still complete, and I haven't lost anything. And once you do that after a while, you can start to shed all beliefs. And when you've eventually, took maybe months, you'd be surprised how many tens of thousands of beliefs you may have. You can eventually discover them as you go through. You will eventually reach a place called inner knowing. That's what the old Indian gurus and sages called self-realization. And while there are beliefs, there is no self-realization. And while beliefs are in the way, there's a blockage to connecting with your universal consciousness, which is your, your true intelligence, which is your true genius within, which is what the brain is supposed to communicate with and through and download information to us from. That cannot be done when there's a lot of beliefs in the way and a lot of prejudices and a lot of self-limiting beliefs. In fact, all beliefs are self-limiting because if you um, believe one thing, it doesn't matter what it is, it discounts anything that's opposite to that or anything that would contradict it in any way or anything that would conflict with it in any way. So that belief has now shut out a lot of information. And every other belief shuts out a lot of other information. So beliefs are blocks to information. Beliefs are blocks to intelligence. But what about faith, if I may put the question? When you have inner knowing, see, faith is kind of, um, it goes back, it's, faith I think is just another word for beliefs and things. You see, when you have inner knowing, you know God. When somebody says, I believe in God, I know that truly he's skeptical about it because every belief is questionable because it's a piece of information that's come from outside of himself. That piece of information has been imposed on him by society, or by schools, by teachers, by religion, by who or whatever else. But when you bypass, shed them all, you connect with inner knowing, and you know what? Inner knowing is really is God because universal consciousness is God. And you know you're connected with God, and you know God, and you have no problems with God, and you have no questions and no skepticism about the concept of God anymore. It becomes part of you and your reality. So, okay. Sounds like beliefs are something's, uh, something that the ego wants to cling on to, uh, to, to feel that it still survives, but it's, a, it's a, like a, a mini version of what we really are. Um, and if we shed all beliefs, then we we are we tap into this universal universal consciousness, a little bit like Jung's collective unconscious, perhaps. Absolutely. In fact, that's what Jung's collective unconsciousness is. And he was probably one of the very first people of our time, anyway, that um, became to came to know and understand that. Although people in the East knew about that for centuries and maybe thousands of years. Uh, that collective unconsciousness is part of us all. But with those beliefs and with those ego in the way, an ego will cling on to beliefs, an ego will kill for beliefs, and that cannot be right. The collective unconsciousness is a peaceful place. The collective unconsciousness is a curious place. The collective unconsciousness place is a knowing and of learning and discovering and communicating and pe inner peace and inner beauty. I mean, once you're connected with that, it's a beautiful place. 
Unfortunately, we can't be connected with it all the time because we've got to drive our car and we've got to be consciously aware at the beta level of consciousness. That's fine. And we've got to do lots of tasks in our work and things throughout the day uh, at that level. And that's fine. But we're, we're not like a car with one gear or just two gears. Most people are working on that beta level all the time. And that's like a car driving along in one gear all of the time. That car won't last very long. That car won't be very good and it won't function very well. We have four gears originally in cars, now there's five, and now there's six gears in cars. And the human being is operating in one gear or two gears all the time. The, the human being should be operating in many gears. They should be operating in the beta for basic things, the alpha connecting at a higher level, the theta and the delta going higher and higher and higher still. But I mainly talk about alpha because if I can get people that far, they will discover the rest themselves. There's no need to talk to them about it. They will simply discover it, you know? Well, wow. that's that's really really interesting. Um, I have heard about alpha and theta and delta waves, and they they do seem to refer to higher and higher states of consciousness, and different also different levels of consciousness within the body and different chakras. Is would you say that's true? Yes, it is true. That's one way of expressing it. I probably don't express it that way, but uh, there are many ways of expressing it. The more you connect with consciousness and the more you go into the different brain wave levels, the higher levels of consciousness you connect with. And as you do it gently over periods of time, you'll be able to download more and more and more and more information. Your own learnings and intuition and intelligence and uh, abilities and things like that will connect with information that is in the universe. You could call it Ashakic records, if you like. But it's more than that. It's, it's universal consciousness. And basically, any piece of information that's out any place in the universe is available to you once you connect with that frequency. And the more we open our mind through meditative or self-hypnotic practices, uh, doing simple alpha brainwave patterns, theta and delta, the more we connect with all of that information, that unlimited amount of information that's not just on our planet, but it's throughout the universe. And the universe is a living entity itself. Every planet, every star is a living entity. And I'm sure there are sentient beings throughout the universe, myriads, countless amounts of sentient beings with amazing amounts of information that we have never accessed because we haven't opened our minds sufficiently to collect it because we've been stuck in this ego consciousness called beliefs. So we need to evolve past uh, this kind of uh, bestial or animalistic uh, beta uh, beta wave uh, kind of uh, way of uh, way of life to uh, to evolve into what we essentially are and always have been and um, so what would what would your message be to um, to the people who saw the, the conference um, there there were many other speakers talking about many different subjects um, now they all relate together um, they're all linked in one way or another. Um, how does this all tie in um, with high consciousness, do you think? Well, there was a wonderful, amazing synchronicity of the communication from all the different speakers, from all different kinds of places and different kinds of backgrounds and different kinds of experiences. That was fantastic. Now, Trevor, who organized the conference, he, he called me many months ago and asked me would I, would I give a, a, a talk in Waterford. He didn't elaborate any further. I didn't know it was for a conference. I thought it was maybe him and a few of his friends. I had no idea what it was about. And then he came back and he told me he was getting Ian Crane and he was getting uh, Garoid and a few more people. And I thought, whoa, this is getting into something big. Um, if we could, as a, a human society, we'll call it all of human society on the planet, if we could get all of the people going into Alpha, Beta and Delta, we could evolve humanity a thousand years in less than one generation. We could move a thousand years forward. We could get rid of all fossil fuels. We could connect with all kinds of ways of producing not alternative energy, but clean energy. Uh, we could break down the water and get the hydrogen and oxygen. We could drive our vehicles with it. And the only thing they'd give off is water. 
we could clean up the earth in one few years. We could get rid of all pollution. We could create levitation type um, traveling equipment, uh, traveling uh, vehicles, like UFO type things. And we could travel w without the use of any fuel much faster, infinitely faster than we're traveling in airplanes at the moment. We could change this planet in a few years if everybody would just work on the mind and connect with more of it. The entire planet is being held back by ego and beliefs and fears and anxieties and pain and suffering that's created by fear, fear, fear. Because when we operate in the beta brain wave area, it's a self-protection thing, expecting to be attacked as in the ancient days by animals in the forest and things like that that are not there. But you're attacked by letters from the tax man now, you're attacked by fear-driven TV and threats from governments and all this kind of nonsense. All that would disappear in less than one generation if we could get everybody opening their minds through simple alpha, beta and theta brainwave levels. It's that powerful and that's what we have at our disposal and that's what we must start to use and that's what we must learn to use. And you know what? It's so simple. Everybody without exception can do it. And we'd get rid of most disease without any medication of any description whatsoever because when the body comes into harmony like that, the body starts to heal itself. The body has phenomenal healing abilities within, but it's not allowed to use them because it's not even allowed to communicate with itself. While we're in the beta brainwave levels, we're in a state of inner conflict. And our relationship with the world is external conflict. So it's all conflict. And we're in a state of conflict with our body, so it cannot heal itself. When we get beyond that into alpha, beta, theta, we go beyond the conflict. The body can heal, the mind can heal, and peace and harmony can reign. Well, thank you, Mr. Ryan. Word out to all the people to try and ease up and get to know themselves and uh, realize their inner consciousness. It's simply kind of like saying chill out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Chill out, relax, connect with the Alpha. There are hundreds of beautiful brainwave synchronicity type uh, pieces of music on YouTube that you can help to synchronize with that and just go into, do it for a few minutes in the morning, do it for a few minutes at night, that's all that's required. And you will become a new being. Because it, it, the complications I speak with beliefs and all that, they will all start to dissolve naturally, easily, when we go into these states. Because these states are beyond beliefs and they're beyond ego and they're peace, tranquility, and harmony, internal, external, and everywhere. And when we create that, we create a new, a new planet, beautiful new green planet, without any of the conflict, without any of the pollution, without any of the nonsense that's going on. Peace and harmony will reign then, and not before then. Thank you very much, Mr. Ryan. I think it's good enough for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, again. And we will be able to rise from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope.